first day of autumn, softball season is drawing to a close, and most of the teams currently in the finals all across Canada got there because of hard work, dedication, luck, the old story. But what about getting some help from your bat? Well, you know what? The ideal bat is almost with us. Imagine it's the bottom of the ninth, your team is down by one. What's the best kind of bat to get the job done? If you're not in the major leagues, it's likely to be aluminum, or even better, a composite bat. Composites are a combination of fibers and resins. The fibers being embedded in the resin at specific angles to give the bat different properties. Composite materials are used extensively in sports because they're great for making lightweight equipment. In baseball and softball, though, lighter isn't always better. A heavy bat may be hard to swing, but it gives you more power than a light one. So composites help manufacturers put power in the right place. You want the barrel of the bat where the ball con connects to uh, act like a trampoline and push the ball back to get the maximum hit distance is really the secret of today's bat design. Someone who's taking steps to uncover that secret is Dan Russell. He's helping CE Composites and other companies make bats that go the distance. If I was to take a wood bat and a ball, and here's my, my ball, when the ball comes in on a wood bat, the ball squishes a, an incredible amount and in the process loses a lot of energy as it rebounds from the bat. And that energy loss means that the ball comes off with a relatively low speed. But if I take an aluminum hollow or composite hollow bat, when the ball comes in, the bat squishes instead of the ball squishing as much, and as a result, the ball comes off much, much faster. Bat designers are keen to find the place where the ball comes off with the most power. The main characteristic of a bat at the sweet spot is that when the ball collides with the bat and then subsequently leaves, the bat isn't left vibrating. The bat is left basically stationary in space, and all the energy that would have gone to vibrate the bat is actually in the ball, sending it across the ballpark. Dan Russell can tap into a bat's sweet spot, literally. Using a special force hammer, he hits the bat at various places. Accelerometers measure the vibrations and translate them into frequencies. We found that if we know the, the frequencies with which a bat vibrates, we can predict how well that bat will perform. The lower the frequency of this particular shape of vibration, the softer the barrel, the better the spring, the softer the barrel, the better the spring, the more elastic the bat is and the faster it's going to throw the ball off when the ball hits it. So where exactly is the sweet spot? The optimal hitting location on the bat is between five and seven inches from the end of the barrel. It's a, it's a combination of, of the fact that all of the bending shapes, all of the bending vibrations have a dead spot, what we call a node. Uh, a place that doesn't move, so if you hit it there, the bat doesn't vibrate and you don't feel it in your hands. Coupled with the fact that the hollow bats have a maximum barrel squish at this location too. As a designer, what we're really trying to do most often is to put the sweet spot in the right location, but also to make it larger. With Dan's analysis, we can actually see it, uh, either on a computer screen or uh, on a printout, so we can make modifications to the bat until someday we'll have the entire barrel being the sweet spot. Knowing a bat's acoustic signature helps in other ways, too. In one instance, we found that a bat was stinging players' hands when they hit the ball. And Dan's analysis showed us that because the handle was quite stiff relative to the barrel, the handle had a lot of movement after the impact with the ball. So we were able to simply change some of the angles of the fibers reduce the stiffness of the handle, and the stinging sensation went away. Because players vary so much in ability, strength, and style, vibration analysis is an important tool for bat manufacturers. He introduced me to the whole concept of tuning a bat and tuning its frequencies to uh, a particular player. You can actually do more to customize a bat for a player. Most bats are sold by weight, but that weight can be in the end of the bat or in the handle or evenly distributed. All of them make a difference. The further away that weight is from, from the handle, so I've got the handle on my lap here, the further away the, the balance point is from my handle, the heavier the bat's gonna feel when you swing it. 
even though they both weigh 30 ounces, the, if that 30 ounces is distributed so that it's farther from the handle, it's going to feel like a much, much heavier bat. So this, this bat with, with the, the balance point very close to the handle actually feels like about a 26 ounce bat, even though it weighs 30 ounces. And the other bat where the balance point is very far from the handle feels more like about a 34 ounce bat when I swing it, even though it, it still weighs 30. CE Composites are now selling bats by swing weight. We have a numerical rating of swing weight. Uh, like a 3.4 versus a 4.4. A 3.4 bat will be easier to swing for a lighter, smaller player. A 4.4 will be for a larger player who can swing a bigger, heavier bat. What bat design is coming to, there's really a right bat for each individual player. From his research, Dan Russell knows what his ideal bat would be. And I would make the, the handle as stiff as possible. I'd make the barrel as soft as possible and yet still has strength to it. And I would end load the bat so it feels heavy when I swing it and it gives me as much power as possible. Now that bat would end up being illegal in almost every league uh, that, would, that would be able to use the bat so I wouldn't be able to play with it anywhere but it would be a, it would be a really, really powerful bat.